Good evening. Tonight we will be presenting on the 22-23 goals that we've had for the school year. And before we get started on the goals, I just wanted to give a little bit of a reminder and the context for which the, these goals sit in in terms of our work. The goals are within the Phase 2 Pleasantville Schools 2026 strategic plan. And the goals are built to support the six strategies in the strategic plan, which are built on objectives and the mission and the beliefs of the district. So a year ago tomorrow, I met with the folks who wrote this strategic plan. And we had a very long in-depth meeting with the one question of the meeting being, how are we going to measure the success of the phase two strategic plan 2026 um, strategic plan? Pleasantville Schools 2026 strategic plan. Sorry, that's the order. Phase two, Pleasantville Schools 2026 strategic plan. Um, and we had a lengthy conversation and a lengthy meeting about how to measure the success of this strategic plan. We are currently in year three of a five-year strategic plan. And if you recall, we transitioned a little bit um, from moving towards um, a lot of different action plans to having focused and specific goals. So we'll do a little bit of the lead up into how we got there. But first, just a reminder that the strategic plan is built on several different beliefs that were developed by the Strategic Planning Committee, one of which is highlighted, which is mindful change as the catalyst for learning, growth, and opportunity as change is inevitable. And I highlighted this because in the middle of this strategic plan, the entire world went through a pandemic, which changed some of our priority areas and our areas of focus. So I thought that that was important to recognize. In addition to the beliefs, we also have a mission statement for our district. And our mission outlines our goal to empower our students to be lifelong learners, dynamic thinkers, and compassionate contributing citizens. The mission also outlines four important tenets of the learning community, which are to have academic programs that support depth of understanding, creativity, and critical reasoning. It also looks to have a safe, supportive environment for respect and collaboration, as well as allowing students to explore their individual passions and celebrate those accomplishments. In addition to that, we look for opportunities for leadership and service for our students. In addition to the mission and the beliefs, we also have four objectives, as well as as mentioned, our six strategies. Our six strategies are in leadership, curriculum, wellness, communication, infrastructure, and partnerships. These six strategies are bold resolutions that dedicate the organization's resources and energies towards continuous creation of systems to achieve the extraordinary ex as expressed in the mission and the objectives. So what we did was we built this um, idea of having our beliefs, mission, objectives, and strategies really being the foundation for what we're trying to achieve and the annual goals being how we want to achieve them. And the change from going through several different action plans that came out of the committee that never went through a, let's call it a super committee, um, is that they really scattered us. So the creation of the annual goals really allows for us to align our improvement efforts and, um, and dedicate our resources, staff, curriculum, programs, assessments, et cetera, into achieving those goals that work towards those broad strategies within the strategic plan. So again, this is about alignment um, between our beliefs, mission, objectives, and strategies with our annual goals. As a reminder, the foundation for this work was the research from McChesney, Covey, and Hooling. 
on wildly important goals. And the goals focus your work on what is your most leverageable change within your organization. In our case, it would be our school or the department. So this year we had school goals for each of the three schools and we had our uh, departments that each made their own goals. Because we made this transition, again, a year ago, so it was June, really each building principal and department supervisor determined what was their biggest leverageable point within their either school or department that they would be able to capitalize on that would yield significant improvements for that building or for that department. So it's just a, a little bit of a walk down memory lane um, for sort of how we got to this point where we're delivering our achievements on our goals that we have throughout the district. So tonight you're gonna to hear from our three building principals as well as our special education director and our assistant superintendent for instructional services to really talk about the instructional program and how it has been impacted and how it has lived or brought to fruition those six strategies within the strategic plan. So when they come up, they're gonna speak about their rationale for why they chose the goal. They're gonna talk about um, what have been their achievements in the goal, some of which were planned for and some of which were unplanned for. So we'll go ahead and get started with our BRS principal, Rachel Hunger. Thank you so much, Dr. Dessa. I am proud to stand up here tonight to talk about the BRS goal from the 2022-23 school year. Our goal this year was to create a narrative writing unit across grades that was aligned in process, expectation, and in standards. This went back to the work that we did with our curriculum team during the 2021-22 school year when collectively we decided to focus on writing for the 22-23 school year. We intentionally went slow to help build a foundational understanding of looking at standards, the workshop model, common language, and standards-based rubric. Having a deep understanding of these areas can be applied to different academic areas to build both horizontal and vertical alignment throughout our curriculum. We dedicated time during, thank you, Siri. We dedicated <laughs> time. <laughs> We dedicated time during the superintendent's conference days, extended days, and our weekly grade level meetings to help work on our goal. As you can see up here, we had different benchmarks that we worked towards throughout the entire year. This captures our work with our consultants, Gravity Goldberg, as well as our work with each other. The timeline set a foundation for year-long adult learning, which in the end ultimately led to an impact on student learning. Through working with our teachers, we pivoted a bit within our goal to work with a variety of resources, included teacher-created lessons, thinking maps, and the Fountas and Pinnell writing mini lessons to create narrative units for all grades, K through four. This is with a huge thank you to our curriculum coordinator, Kimberly Shulman, and our instructional coach, Tyler Shea. They have been instrumental in the creation and implementation of these units throughout our school. Now to the fun part, some of the highlights. So for us, some of our highlights came from really working with our teachers. Like Dr. DeSauce shared, we set in with a plan. We had some things that we planned for and we're celebrating the success of those plans, but also some things that we pivoted and we found success in as well in areas to celebrate. One of that that's up there, you can see it's our mini management unit. Through working with our teachers, we decided that we need, really needed to highlight the importance of classroom practices. In order to have successful implementation of curriculum, we had to take a step back. We had to look at how are we setting our students up for success. And out of that came these mini management units. It set these expectations around the writing work, workshop, and we were very carefully crafting them so that the skills built upon each other, which went back to that work in the 2021-22 school year around really wanting vertical alignment, K-4, within our schools. Within a unit of study, students are now writing multiple pieces within that genre. 
This is a change for us. We had opportunities within narrative writing in the past, of course, for, teach for students to create beautiful narratives, whether it be telling their own stories or stories about characters that they created. But by creating multiple pieces, this builds in student choice, it builds in student voice, and it gives children a chance to pick a piece that is most meaningful to them to bring to publication as they reflect on their learning throughout the unit. Something else that came from our work together this year was really teachers learning from each other. This happened in two ways. For us, this happened in our work with our consultant through lab sites, where our consultant would go in, would model a lesson for our teachers. We had a chance to really debrief that lesson, learn from each other, look at student work, and take next steps back to our classroom. This also happened from teachers learning from teachers. Um, we were able to get into classrooms, teachers going in, maybe three teachers sitting, watching another lesson, and again, debriefing on that experience. What are we gonna take back to our classrooms? This again brought us back to that goal of really building that horizontal alignment within our classrooms and ultimately vertical alignment, K4. As you can see up there, although it's probably pretty hard to read, um, the first picture up there is a picture of our student work. We took a pause mid-unit and we had teachers bring in piles and piles of writing folders and as you open them up, we had a chance to sit to look at our student work, to reflect on what are our students doing well, find a moment to capture that, and then as we're thinking about planning for the rest of the unit, looking at what individual students need as well as what a groups of students need that teachers can plan for that small group writing instruction. Um, something else that you can see up there, kids, those are some of our second graders, they're on the rug, they're sharing their writing with each other. You see writing happening throughout the classroom. What I mean by that is it's not only at a desk. You'll see kids cozied up in the corner. You'll see kindergartners sitting on beanbags. You'll see teachers sitting at a round table, working in a small writing group. And this is something that really came out of our work this year. And for us, how do we look towards next year? Again, going back to we intentionally went slow to build this narrative unit, which led to a lot of adult learning. It sets us up for success for writing for the 23-24 school year as we launch new writing units with an opinion and informational as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Maris coming up for the middle school. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, our middle school goal this year was differentiated instruction, um, really to provide our instructional staff with the tools and strategies to successfully differentiate instruction to meet the needs of our diverse learners. Um, the, this particular goal we felt hit on um, five of our strategies in our original strategic plan, as Dr. Dasan mentioned earlier, um, which are critical to um, uh, this goal's success. So the rationale for this goal um, really, the middle school offers opportunities for acceleration in certain grade levels in specific content areas, as many of you may be aware. However, the vast majority of classes are made up of extremely diverse learning styles, interest in content, needs, and skill level. Therefore, effective differentiation must be robust enough to engage and challenge the full range of learners in our classrooms. Uh, we use superintendent's conference days, as Ms. Hunger mentioned, uh, faculty meetings, extended days to accomplish our goal. Here are some of our benchmarks. At the core of each one of these benchmarks, I'm certainly not going to uh, read each and every one of these to you, is really addressing, uh, and at the core of differentiation, is addressing student individual needs. Um, teachers must look for every opportunity to get to know students. Uh, through conversations with students, classroom discussions, uh, student work, observation, and formal assessment. At the root of differentiation is assessment. Um, then teachers will design and modify learning experiences based on those assessment findings. So our goal within the goal was to create a library of resources amongst our professional learning community that was housed in Schoology that allowed access um, to each other's resources specific to the four pillars of differentiation. Um, and as Ms. Hunger also mentioned, having teachers learn from each other is some of the most important work that we do and always something that teachers 
um, look to accomplish, we look to accomplish throughout the year, providing teachers with opportunities to do that. We also had an expert visit us multiple times this year, Lisa Westman, um, whose work is rooted in Carol Ann Tomlinson's work. Um, she was fabulous and very well received. I know Dr. Desaw came to visit a few different times um, and she's, she became a part of the middle school family. Um, also a guest at many of our potluck uh, lunches that we have, um, so she enjoyed that. Um, but, and she was incredibly proud. She had the first district that um, was able to accomplish um, such a feat, which is really uh, within Schoology, this library of resources, again, created by them, organized by content, specific to these four pillars of uh, differentiation, which are content, content, product, process, and learning environment. Um, we believe we met our goal of reestablishing best practices in our classroom after a pandemic where engagement was certainly a worldwide concern, as Dr. Desant mentioned earlier. Uh, we are incredibly proud of the work and look forward to build upon it in the future. This um, greatest hits list, if you will, um, is something that we were um, looking to accomplish, but it wasn't necessarily there when we started. It, it was adapted um, throughout the year. One other um, highlight I wanted to mention was a look fors uh, document, if you will, that we conduct learning walks, uh, Dr. Shigaris, myself, and the curriculum coordinators, to visit classrooms, and we have checkpoints that we're looking for to see if um, different differentiation um, goals and objectives are met, and we've shared that with the teachers and uh, with Lisa Westman, and um, it's been a great opportunity. That picture on the bottom right is a faculty meeting, uh, I'm sorry, superintendent's conference day that we had with Lisa, where we get every single person um, who's an instructional leader in our uh, multi-purpose room and roll up our sleeves and get to work. And, and, and the pandemic was um, highlighted a lot of different things, but to get back to basics and focus on um, differentiation, which really is a result of many things, result of a goal, of many different goals, um, but we are thrilled to have um, had such, such a successful year um, with this goal and really had our focus. The last thing I will say, I will leave you with a seventh grader I asked today, what did you notice differently about this year than any other year um, in terms of our focus on differentiated instruction? And I quote, I feel like teachers really got to know me this year and gave me options when working on different projects, things that we enjoyed and Ms. Hunger mentioned uh, student voice and student choice. So um, certainly with some of our students that, that was very, very much visible and apparent this year, which I love. Um, so that's the middle school goal and uh, we're very proud to present it to you, so thank you. Pass it over to Mr. Palumbo in the high school. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, so happy to join you tonight. Our high school goal this year uh, was around communication. Uh, there are five C's in 21st century learning. Our team looked at all those five C's, and when we were looking at a leverage point, how we thought we could Im impact students the most, uh, communication we felt was critical. Uh, the ability for students to communicate what they know and they can do uh, to a, a broad audience, to different types of audiences uh, in different settings. So it's something we were excited to do. Uh, there are direct connections to the strategic plan. You talk about uh, creating future ready students. So when we looked at our idea around this overarching goal that cuts, cuts across the content areas. Uh, communication, we thought, was an excellent place to start, uh, like I said earlier, to put students in a position to communicate what they know and they can do through their speaking and their writing. Uh, and whether you're taking math, English, science, social studies, fine or performing arts, I mean, one of our world languages, each and every one of our departments was able to find a great way to develop communication skills with students. A lot like the previous principals who have uh, shared their information this evening, the benchmarks uh, that we established throughout the year were really about the adult and student learning uh, that took place here, and then the opportunities that we were able to create for students throughout the year. You know, we're very lucky in that we've got amazing members of our faculty who attend conferences and summer institutes. I'm thinking specifically about uh, folks like James Finnan in our English department and Melanie Siakolo in our social studies department. They led professional development this year around civil discourse, a framework for what that looks like in the classroom. You don't have to look very far to see some of the disagreements that uh, emerge in society today when discourse takes place in a, a public setting. So I think that was excellent. Uh, and then something that uh, James did, uh, James Finnan happens to teach our uh, AP seminar course, and he's done a significant amount of training around the presentation skills that are associated in that particular course. 
we've been able to take his work in that course and allow it to permeate across the content areas in terms of what quality presentations look like. So he was able to take some of that training he received from the college board, engage members of our faculty in that training throughout the year as they worked around this goal of communication and was incorporating that work into their classroom. So very exciting work at the high school. And like I said, these benchmarks served as a, a roadmap, if you will, you know, for us throughout the year. Some of our highlights uh, from the year, a lot like uh, Dr. Mara talked about, we wanted to leverage our online tools to the greatest extent possible. So a lot like the middle school, we created folders and an online database uh, in Schoology so that we could catalog materials, resources, and activities you know, for teachers throughout the year as they were developed. We also looked at assessment, right? We felt, we feel like, you know, one of the pitfalls of a, of a high school is that learning can sometimes be compartmentalized. And what we were able to do through the development of common rubrics is have English teachers and social studies teachers speak the same language uh, when they're having a conversation with students about what presentations look like and about what writing looks like. Uh, same thing in math and science and in world languages and in the fine and performing arts. Obviously, in some of those disciplines, the connections were a lot easier to make. Uh, but I feel like this overarching goal of communication gave each one of those disciplines an opportunity to make some meaningful connections. The images that you see up there, uh, to my left on the screen, the first one is Ms. Siakolo, I talked about her earlier, engaging members of the faculty in conversations around civil discourse as part of our professional development. And to the right, uh, you see, you'll see Mia Hojai, uh, Dr. Desa, and I think uh, Ms. Grossman had the opportunity to visit the high school last night. Mm -hmm. uh, Mia is a part of our science research program. She recently traveled to Texas. She presented, uh, she's fantastic. And the work that she's done this year in classrooms, I think played a role in the work that she's you know, been able to do as a student in our science research program and the great success she's had doing some of her presentations. Additional goal highlights for the year, uh, we try to leverage our tools to garner feedback from students and families so that we can engage with them. And I talked about student and adult learning. A piece of that adult learning was around how adults, you know, members of our team, can communicate well with families and students. That's really the two aspects of this slide that I want to speak to. Um, that feedback from students is critical. It speaks to what you know, Dr. Mara shared in terms of the differentiation and creating those customized experiences for students. It's also important to get feedback from families. Uh, so that's something that we focused on throughout the year. The other piece in regards to communication, you know, as an ongoing part of our work, we focused on the culture and climate of the building uh, using the culturally sustaining framework. Think about our words and how they matter and the impact that they can have you know, in welcoming a student into learning you know, or potentially creating some roadblocks for students. So it was great. You know, I'm thinking of Marianne Flatley. Uh, you've done a wonderful job as a board uh, giving us that type of SEL position across the district. She held great develop professional development opportunities uh, with our students with our teachers this year, you know, around the language that they use. So that learning was taking place, you know, on the student level and on the teacher level. Of the two images on this slide, uh, I referenced Mr. Finnan earlier. Uh, he worked with our teachers around their presentation skills, uh, like I said, across the content areas. And uh, the, the slide, the picture on the right of the slide is actually just happened last week. Uh, Dr. Desau worked to coordinate a visit with the Blue Ribbon Commission. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but that's a commission that's looking at uh, graduation requirements across the state of New York and determining if we might be better served by creating some varied pathways uh, that look a little bit different than the current regents exams that exist. And if I were to point out a comment, you know, I'm thinking about Greg Fondi, he's not here right now, he heads up that senior internship program. He selected a cross section of seniors to come in and talk about their projects. And uh, the two folks that were there to visit us from the commission, Regent Wills and Regent, I can't remember the other person's oh, name. I, I know the first name, from the Bronx. From the Bronx, yeah. <laughs> they were as yeah, they were very impressed by our students' abilities to share what they know and what they can do. And it was not rehearsed. In fact, Greg had to tell both of them that he did not run them through what to say. He did not give them specific talking points. They were all articulate. They were all so excited about their individual projects. And they communicated it with such clarity that it was just like a very proud moment. In fact, Dr. Desai said at one point, as you can see, our goal is around communication. Uh, and it was not planned that way. Uh, but it, it certainly, again, you think about our work, tying back into our strategic plan, making students future ready, ready providing them with these authentic opportunities for learning and exploration in areas of interest. 
all uh, things that we're very excited and passionate about. So we appreciate uh, the board support throughout the year and allowing us the space to create these goals to cut across the content areas. We're excited about what the future brings. We've talked about maybe another C, you know, in the, in the near future. And I thank you for your time this evening. I will introduce Dr. Bala. Good evening. Thank you for having us this evening. Um, in special education, our goal uh, was to be in compliance with timelines set forth in regulations when it comes to evaluating students and determining their eligibility for special education services. Um, our goal touched upon different areas of the strategic plan, including wellness, communication, infrastructure and resources, and partnerships. We were very strategic in selecting our goal. Uh, we were very mindful of the fact that our um, department team members would be heavily involved in the building level work towards the building goals. And at the same time, this was an area that we wanted to monitor as we were um, starting to dig ourselves out of the COVID-19 backlog. Um, so we wanted to select a goal that was appropriately ambitious for our department. Uh, some of the benchmarks, uh, just capturing some of the work that we uh, did towards this goal over the course of the year include reviewing caseloads uh, for team members to ensure equity and um, ascertain manageability of caseloads, training new staff members and testing protocols, implementing automated systems for scheduling of CSE meetings and sharing of confidential CSE documents. Um, some of our highlights include the fact uh, we are very proud to report that we are 100% in compliance with our goal. Um, we were able to implement automated systems for scheduling of meetings, for sharing confidential documents, and this is an area that we uh, would like to continue to refine, uh, but it is a step in the right direction for us. Uh, we were able to, over the course of this year, finalize our continuum of services for the upcoming school year, and that resulted in a finalized district special education plan. Thank you for approving that. Um, and I have to say that we really have to, we're so grateful and thankful to our team members, because none of this would be possible without their hard work and dedication every single day. Um, all of our work has really set us and uh, set us up for success as we prepare for our extended school year program and the regular school year in September. Um, Dr. Faggio. Good evening. Good evening. For the last part of this presentation, I'll be talking about our technology goal. So for this year, and as we could see throughout all of the other presentations tonight, technology certainly plays a central role in a lot of the work that we do. And as we've made these investments and as we continue to grow, we're looking at, well, where can we continue to sort of enhance and grow our utilization of technology? So for this year, we really focused on a technology-informed, technology-first approach. And what that meant for us was really finding a way to utilize technology to enhance our teacher performance work as well as our professional learning work. And this is using the frontline online system that contains a number of different modules. So for us, really what we found is that it was important for us to move one of these pieces from paper. We'd been using paper still in 2022, 23, and we said it's time to kind of upgrade this a little bit get this digitized, and there are a lot of sort of residual advantages to doing that. Um, certainly, as far as our work is concerned, we touch on the different strategies for curriculum and leadership, um, as well as communication and partnership. And certainly, um, as we were continuing to work on this throughout the year, collaborating with our building leaders and different department heads, being able to roll this out, and I'll highlight where we really were able to punctuate those pieces throughout. And what we found with this is it really gave us a chance to increase our efficiency. And that was a really key part of this work. So as far as the benchmarks go, uh, we hit a lot of benchmarks. It was a busy year for uh, APPR and professional growth and all these tools. And we actually were able to kind of hit those marks and go beyond it. Uh, what was nice is that throughout this, the singular thread that you see is really about 
sort of training, launching, configuring, and use, utilizing these different tools. So we would go through a process of saying, okay, well, here's our APPR system. Let's go ahead, let's do some training, let's implement it, configure it, work with our staff, get everybody up and running, and then repeat that with professional learning in that system as we expanded it out. And so um, here we kind of tackled all our different parts, uh, building an internal knowledge base, uh, certainly one of the things that's been notable about the technology department is the expansion of support staff that we've invested in. Uh, so I'm going to take this as a chance to shout out Dylan Statt. He's our database specialist. And so he's been a major player in this work and helping to sort of facilitate that as well as Rickman Fox on our team. And so these pieces not only help us get going, but they set that foundation so that as we roll into next year, we can continue to grow. And I think what's exciting for this is it really gives us a chance to utilize this data. And I know in talking with Dr. Desa, that was really a central part of that conversation, right? Sort of what are the highlights? Well, this highlight is we have our full APPR system online as well as our professional learning. Um, and we thought, well, let's hit that and let's keep going. So we were able to add to our original goal and add staff evaluations. So we worked with the different bargaining units and reviewed the evaluations, put them into the system, uploaded them, trained all of our staff, our building leaders, as well as our department heads who oversee CSEA, nurses, our teaching assistants, counselors, related services. And we were able to fully implement all of these pieces. So deliver the training, implement it, and successfully walk out of the end of the school year with these evaluations in a digital system. And so uh, this will lead us into next year where we have some data-driven systems. Dr. Mara and I did a training last year. I'm sure we'll do a training again this fall with our staff as we re-engage and look to continue doing this with technology. And with that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Desa. So I just want to take, take a minute to just reflect on the work that's been done under this, or that is the tech person, I just want to point that out, that is not me making those noises or any devices I own. I um, just want to take a step back and reflect on a couple of things. The first is the process and the tremendous amount of work that has come out of these five goals. I am very proud of the administrators that are here, your assistant principals, your supervisors. The amount of work and time, like this is supposed to be, as you saw from the wildly important goal, an 80-20 split. We still did all of the work that we do to run our buildings and run our departments. This was 20% roughly, right? of our time and how they mobilized partnerships with professionals, the leadership capacity that they have, that their teams have, that ended up being teachers teaching teachers with this piece. Um, this didn't just happen. All of their benchmark slides showed that this was because we were able to dedicate time and energy towards these goals, the conference days, the extended learning days, parts of our faculty meetings, um, everything was in some way connected to this work. And we still had to do things on safety, on running exams, all the pragmatic things that we still have to do in our schools. So really the structure, I think, yielded so much, their leadership allowed us to accomplish so much for the end game is always our students. And really being able to be efficient with, from efficiencies with the technology to the amount of time and dedication, whether it's about building foundational skills in writing for our young learners, being able to differentiate and engage our middle school students in learning, that is age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, 
pedagogically appropriate for them at that age group is tremendous, along with the multiple opportunities. Mr. Palumbo underscored my pride being in that room with two regents and these students off the cuff doing everything related to communication with no one telling them what to do. Nobody said make eye contact. Nobody said be engaging. Nobody said be interesting, be fun. They just, they did it. And they were speaking about their genuine experiences in this internship program, which is what I wanted the regents to see that we do something really cool here in Pleasantville to help our students with engagement in the last couple of weeks of their senior year. So I'm incredibly proud of what we've accomplished as a team, we took a leap and we tried something new and I'm really proud of what it yielded. Again, I think our students are better positioned because of the work that we did on these goals this year. So with that, um, I want to conclude by just saying I am very thankful to the board for allowing us, again, a year ago tomorrow, we started this transition to work on wildly important goals. And with the grace of time um, and the dedication that we had, we were really able to do a lot for our students. Our systems are different. Our curriculum is different. Our processes are different. All in the vein of having a school district that really supports students to be lifelong learners, creative thinkers, and really dedicated just to them and to their success. So thank you.